Hello and welcome to everybody on cloud fitness. So in this particular video, we will, you know, dive a little more deeper into the jobs in the Databricks. So in the previous session, we have created a parameterized notebook and we have created a job out of it. What we did was we were trying to load the data into the Snowflake data warehouse after doing some ETL operations as well as we used uh, widgets which is dbutils.widgets we tried using widgets to parameterize that particular notebook and we saw how parameterizations work in the jobs right so now we'll go back to the portal and try to see what else jobs can offer in Databricks so um, here we go on the left hand side when you click on this workflow option you will see that you have an option of jobs you have job runs you have delta life tables so delta life tables is a different concept we will talk about this later now coming on to the job you will always see there is an option of create job and this is the same option that we used in our last uh, video as well right so this was the job that we created and uh, let me just click on this job itself so the moment i create uh, click on this job you can actually see that there is an option of runs as well as tasks here right so apart from that when it was run last time all the details would be here it ran for 18 minutes right and this is the job it ran it ran on 17th july this particular time now let me just click on this so this is the notebook essentially you know where we have done the changes you can see we created widgets out of it and then we ran this particular notebook completely end to end and here we were actually writing to the snowflake uh, you know we were writing in the table and you know the output and we how we were writing we were writing it using the parameters which is nothing but dbutils.widgets right so this is how you know an already created job looks like on the left on the right hand side when you click on this you can also see a job id right similarly you can see tasks run id similarly status in case it fails you can actually see a failed status over here as well and the notebook which is actually being used to run this particular job Similarly, any details related to your clusters can be seen here and any parameter that you put in can also be seen here. Now, I'll just go back. So, you can also see on the right hand side, there is an option of Git settings. So, in case you have any, uh, you know, you have DevOps configured, you have Git configured, in that case, it will work for you. Now, similarly, if you want to schedule this job at a particular period of time, right if you want to schedule it you can schedule it at whatever time period you want right similarly there is also called as cron syntax so that is called your cron tab syntax now this cron tab syntax uh, mostly the people who are working or who have worked on unix they will be more familiar on how to write this cron syntax otherwise you can also if you don't want to go with this cron syntax you can normally go for the scheduled syntax as well through the ui you can select the day month and uh, you know you can simply select the time and just save it now similarly if you want to have any notifications flowing in right in case your job succeeds or fails you can add the notifications over here now if you click on edit notifications over here and you click on add right you can just put the email so let's say i put my email over here let's say right and here i can you know just say okay, okay i want to send notification in case it is a st in case my job started in case i you know the job is a success or in case the job is a failure right so this can always be there and you know i can simply just confirm it right now similarly uh, you know whenever i'll start the job i'll get an email in fact i can click on run now as well to show you right now it will fail because i have changed the password of snowflake so uh, you can see the second run has started now right you can see the status it says pending actions if i want to pause right the, basically i have just uh, you know started another instance of uh, the same job now you can actually see the run id is different now for each run the run id will be different you need to understand that also if it has run on a schedule or it has been launched manually that option is also very clearly uh, you know visible over here now similarly if you want to give any other 
person in your team permissions to this particular job you can go ahead click on edit permissions if you have any groups you can add that groups if you want to add give permission to a individual you can give the person in uh, that person individually the access to this particular job now in that case the person will be able to you know view the job or edit the job or, you know or manage the job based on the on the permissions that you give he can be an owner he can manage the run he or she can view it and things like this so similarly there is an option of maximum concurrent runs as well so this maximum concurrent runs is nothing but uh, you know in case you are trying to run the same notebook through multiple jobs right so that is called your maximum concurrent runs so ideally you should always keep it as one like there is mostly in most of the cases there is no need to increase the concurrent runs because it might create issues as well right because you are reading and writing and in this case in this particular case i'm reading and writing and if i'm creating multiple instances or i'm trying to run it concurrently then it might create you know any table lock issues as well so this is how you know your jobs portal look like and similarly you have the matrix as well which kind of shows you uh, which kind of gives you a little more details on the runs of the job on when the job was run right now it is in green color color because it was a success otherwise you know if it fails it comes in in the red color as well so it's kind of just give you a matrix on how much time or how many times the job has failed now similarly you have a task option over here now this is the task option that we have chosen while creating now in fact let me go back so let it run this part is running and i'll just go click on create job now i will randomly select any notebook from my profile i'll just randomly select a notebook so let's say i selected one notebook over here right now here is an option to choose a cluster you can go ahead click on this edit option and you can select any cluster configuration that you want to this is the place where you kind of select the cluster now let me just come down over here you can click on this new job cluster and you can name the cluster whatever you want and then you can specify the configuration as per your requirements over here and even in the advanced option if you want to add any spark configurations you can go ahead add it as well so this is more towards your uh, you know selection of your cluster and coming on to the parameters you can add parameters we have already seen in the previous video how we can add parameters but another thing that i wanted to show you is the advanced option now in this advanced option you can add dependent libraries you can edit notifications notification is nothing but sending off an email right similarly retry policy timeout all these things you can actually uh, you know mention now the most important here is add dependent libraries the moment i click on it in case you you have any jar files you want to upload any jar file or you know uh, you know you you have any any package that you want to install right you can add it here itself right now this uh, this is the place so let's say i want to install network x right now in this case what will happen is whenever you know my lab my uh, job will spin up automatically it will spin up this particular cluster which i've shared and it will add dependent libraries to this particular cluster so this is something that uh, you know you should know and this notification retry policy and a timeout is essentially you know in case it is running and you want to time it out so let's say uh, it is a streaming job so st for streaming jobs let's say it is running continuously from past 24 hours or you know you know that it will run continuously and you want to stop it after a particular time right so you can have a timeout option set on your jobs now similarly uh, you know a retry policy now in, in kai uh, like let's say it fails right and if you want to you know if if you want it to automatically retry it for a certain number of times then you can add a retry policy as well so now let me just go back now you can see right now for this particular job i have just started right and the cluster is starting it is showing you in the green color now if i go here you can actually see uh, let me 
go to the runs and go to the table option now you can see it you can see it is starting you know the cluster is starting and it takes little time to for the cluster to start and your job to run so this is pretty much uh, you know about the jobs and there is not much to the jobs uh, at least here because the, this is a simple uh, you know uh, a simple thing where you just need to schedule the notebooks in case you you are uh, need, like you want to orchestrate your notebook you want to run your notebooks from databricks you can go and you know schedule a job over here otherwise there is an also an option to run your jobs from the azure data factory side as well so that option is also always there so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like subscribe and share my channel Thank you so much for being till here.